Good afternoon, Paul. How are you? I'm good. Good, good. Um, Bruce, why do you uh, why do you do photography? I do photography partly because I've always done photography. I got my first camera when I was eight years old, and even then I was trying to take good pictures because I had to pay for the development. Photography allows me to get outside. I like the outdoors, communing with nature. So it's a, it's a healthy, it's a healthy art. Um, I like the fact that it's. It involves the art of seeing, even though it's one of the more recent visual arts historically. Uh, it's it's the most basic visual art because you have to see something in nature to photograph it. And I, guess, I think all of our other arts actually drive ultimately from nature. So, so I like the element of, of photography that it's it's very basic. Um, and I like to think about uh, the story of John Muir. Uh, who is a Wisconsin native. Uh, when he was 29 years old, he had a major industrial accident and he was blinded for months. And when he, well, he was blinded, <clears throat> he, he decided that if he ever got his sight back, he was going to spend the rest of his life seeking out beauty. Well, after several months, he did get his sight back and that's what he did. He he embarked uh, hiking from Wisconsin down to the southwest and eventually ended up in Yosemite Park. And he explored the park and he, he wrote back to people out east and they learned about that. But his, his basic idea of devoting his life to seeking beauty is, is what one of the things that draws me to photography. It makes me seek beauty and when you seek it, you find it. Have you ever, have you ever um, taken classes or had any training? I just started doing, like I, like I said, I started out with a little uh, Instamatic box camera as a child and eventually oh. got a single lens reflex when I was in high school. And I read some books and I looked at pictures and eventually in college I did darkroom work. Okay. Um, so I, I got to say I never took a class in photography. So I'm totally self-taught. I think a big part of my training in art, though, really wasn't from photography it was actually as a child growing up in a house where we had art books and I would just look at these art books of classical paintings and I think I got my sense of what looks good of, of um, color light um, how to put things together we just talked about your artistic background I think um, can you tell me more about your background professionally uh, professionally I'm a physician a family practice physician and I think photography is is helped by that. I think you know, developing some sensitivity at work, and, and photography also acts as an antidote, a way to you know clear my mind and you know, uh, reduce tension in life. How has your practice changed over time? Well, my 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 serious photography probably started in 1995 when I started doing medium format photography. That was six by seven. Uh, cameras. Uh, they made a, a negative about like this or a slide about like that uh, as, as opposed to 35 millimeter. And I shot everything on a tripod and I think I, I, I thought of myself as uh, Ansel Adams Jr. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I was shooting uh, you know landscapes and everything was actually pretty uh, classically uh, set up. Um, not a lot of originality, I think. Um, when you're carrying really heavy gear, you tend not to be spontaneous. You think really hard about taking taking that, that tripod off your back and unloading that 30-pound camera pack. And as a result, I think too many of the pictures uh, tended to come out sort of like postcards. Um, of all the work that you've photographed, I see that you have a lot of uh, subject matter from your lighthouses, your animals, landscapes. Um, what types do you enjoy the most? Or do you enjoy any of them more than the other? I like the variation of seasons. Uh, I'm always enjoying, you know, I'm always looking forward to the next season. But I have to say that photographically, I like winter the best. And uh, I like the forms of ice and snow the hoar frost, the ice storms, um, the, the compositions that you can get from that, uh, the surrealistic landscapes. Um, 
the birds that we get in the winter. So we certainly have enough winter. We do. <laughs> and, we do. <laughs> uh, so I have to say that I like winter and that's, that's a fairly selfish thing as far as my preference because Eric Miller tells me that people don't like winter photos. But I do photography really mostly to please myself and so I keep shooting winter pictures. <laughs> and they're beautiful, by the way. Thank they you. Are. I, um, I do have to agree with you. I think that winter, for me, is also a favorite time to, mm -hmm. to, to shoot. But, but Summer is my least favorite time. Everything uh, looks green and it overgrown. It is. It's all the same. Um, but I'm too much of a wimp to stand out there in the cold too long. <laughs> um, is there a particular, are there ever any particular themes that you pursue? Well, in landscapes, I, I pursue water, and, I, and it's, that's not conscious, but I, when I look at my website, almost all my landscapes involve water. Lakes, rivers, floods, or um, streams, uh, waterfalls, reflections on the water, lighthouses in front of water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the ice, of course, is water. So, I mean, landscape-wise, I'm always drawn to water in, in one of its forms. Um, as far as birds, I, I'm, I'm drawn to the variety, and I'm particularly drawn to behavior. Um, I'm not really a birder. I'm not someone who can recognize bird sounds and identify the bird. I don't keep a life list. I look at birds as, as uh, artistic, uh, aesthetic objects. <laughs> I do try to learn about them, and you know, you do need to know about them so you know where to find them and where. Sure. <laughs> but. Uh, I'm particularly attracted to the behavior of birds, and, and a lot of times through photography, I'll, I'll, I'll see bird behavior that I never would have anticipated, I never would have read about in books. Um, Bruce, can you describe a real-life situation that inspired you in your work? The Apostle Island ice caves um, were available for people to walk over, uh, through in 2014 and 2015. And that was really a revelation <clears throat> that we could have such intense, surrealistic landscape beauty right here. It, for, for a few weeks each year that we had the equivalent of a national park and the tip of Wisconsin. And uh, that really w had a big impression on me. So other than being a physician and an artist, um, what, other, what else have you done? I had four kids. <laughs> That's a big job in of, in of itself. <laughs> um, I played clarinet in a little shoot community you band. You played the clarinet? I still do, yeah. You do? I, I, I swore I'd never pick it up again after high school, and here I am still honking away. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm a backer and donator to the Weiss Earth Science Museum. Okay. I've donated fossils to the museum, and I, I work with the board uh, for the Friends of the Weiss. Um, so, so briefly, um, I want to talk about the art world um, here. Is there, is there anything? Uh, <coughs> tell me what you like and what you dislike about about the art world specifically. Well, as I mentioned before, my goal in art is to produce something that I think will have lasting value. And that's pretty much against the, against the grain in the art world, uh, especially with social media. And people view art primarily off of their cell phones and their laptops. And they don't, you know, having something that's enlarged and highly detailed really can't be very valued because can't be seen in those under those venues so that that's sort of a, an issue I have is that people who can't see a large print will never know what that looks like uh, um, since social media has taken over the art world so much that everything revolves around impact what catches your eye and photographically that means the brightest gaudiest colors um, compositions to the point of being overly simplistic because people don't want to take the time to see something that your eye has to search around and explore. Uh, so, so that trend I, I'm, I really don't care for. 
if, if, I, if I wanted to get the most likes for a bird photograph, I'd get a picture of a bird with its mouth open, and, and that would be the only thing you would see in the picture would be the head in the open mouth with the tongue sticking out. That's, <laughs> that, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what art is in the social media world is. Or I'd do a landscape where you've got a, um, a sunset uh, with uh, orange, purple, and green sky, um, all, all reflecting in water, but no detailed objects except maybe a dock. So, <laughs> um, so that's what I, I'm really counter to. I, I have no interest in that type of art. Bruce, do you travel very often? A moderate amount. Um, I do most of my photography within an hour of here, um, but I like to get away two or three times a year further away. Last year I went to Croatia uh, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Montenegro, and then I, my, I went to Iceland for five days. That was that was fantastic. Um, I'm going to backpack Al Royale in the spring. I've never been to Al Royale, and I haven't backpacked in 38 years. Okay. <laughs> so that <laughs> so that'll be exciting too. But it's good to get away and travel, uh, you know, get a fresh perspective, see something different. I was in Florida a few weeks ago, and you know, it's nice to have warm weather for a little bit and see brightly colored, huge pink birds like like this behind me, uh, which we don't have any big pink birds no, around here. So I have to go to Florida to find big pink birds. So, yeah, and I did see. So I did see some of your photos from Florida and Croatia and Bosnia, and they were they were astounding. Mm -hmm. They are astounding. They're beautiful. Do you have a uh, favorite or most inspirational place that you like to photograph? I'm always drawn to Lake Superior for some reason. Uh, pictured rocks and the North Shore of Superior in Minnesota, Teddy Gooch State Park, Crosby uh, State Park. Um, you got the hills, you got the colors, you got these uh, rocks on the shoreline, the lighthouses. And those are primarily fall and winter destinations. But <laughs> Back to winter. Those are my those are my favorite spots. Okay, good. So so more Porcup local. Porcupine Mountains. I have to add that too. Okay. Nice. Um, professionally, as an artist, uh, what what is your your goal? To have fun. <laughs> Make pretty things. Have, pretty much. I I I, I have no. Uh, sophisticated answer to that. I, I, my, my goal is to have fun and uh, um, record nature in a way that other people can appreciate it and, and enjoy as much as I do. It's simple as that. Oh, I love that. I love that. Um, in, in closing here, is there anything that you would like to add that you would like viewers to know? Well, I have a website www.brucedans.com. Okay, we'll put that in the uh, in the comments a, below. A, a, my apologies that it's got way too many pictures in it. <laughs> it's easier to add them than to take them away. So. Nice. That's true. That's true. <clears throat> well, Bruce, this has been nice. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. <laughs>